Hey everyone, welcome and thanks for joining our talk about eBPF and Cilium at Sky. For some context, first of all, who is Sky? So Sky started out as a satellite broadcast company with headquarters in uh, the UK in London and has expanded into a much larger multinational company with presences in many other countries. Likewise, Sky has expanded into many other areas beyond satellite broadcast and one of those areas is OTT or over the top, which is online video streaming and OTT is a part of Sky, which we are part of. There's going to be two of us who are involved in the presentation today. I'll quickly introduce ourselves and then get on with the content because 20 minutes goes by quite quickly. So first of all, I'm Sebastian Duff or Seb. I've been with Sky for just over six years, originally as a software engineer before moving into delivery. And I'm now responsible for the core engineering department, which we'll cover a bit more in the introduction. And with me doing the presentation is Anthony Contois, who is a principal engineer in core engineering at Sky. Anthony has a strong background in both SRE and software engineering and joined Sky in 2016. I'd also like to mention CECG, who are a consultancy who have played an important role in the journey to build a mature platform as a service offering and in our work with Cilium and eBPF. Joseph Samuel from CECG was originally going to be part of the presentation with us, but due to timing, he was only able to be involved with the preparation and not actually part of the presentation. So this talk might be a bit different than the others. Rather than going into the deep technicals of how we're leveraging eBPF, we'll be focusing on the delivery aspect and how we leverage technology to gain a high level of confidence, mitigating risk to the platform and to the business. In the first section of the presentation, I'll give a brief overview of what we as core engineering do, and then I'll hand over to Anthony to first talk about why we chose Cilium and eBPF, and then about the pipelining as a form of risk mitigation. So core engineering is a department within the global video engineering and apps uh, division, and it is responsible for, well, Global Video Engineering and Apps is responsible for client libraries and um, backend services and a portion of the clients as well, which is supporting the video and play out for Sky's OTT proposition. Some of the most recognizable platforms and propos uh, propositions, which we are part of at Sky, uh, Sky Go, uh, Now, which was formerly Now TV, Peacock, and soon to be Sky Showtime. In core engineering, we build a multi-tenanted Kubernetes-based platform as a service offering, which hosts about 90% of the application workload. The platform is built as a white label product so that it can be built once and deployed many times to support the different organizations and propositions. As the underlying platform for the high profile, high profile propositions, we have very large and complex requirements, including being highly available, hybrid cloud, multi-region and active active, and all of these at high scale and low latency. So to be able to operate efficiently at scale, we have a number of important engineering principles, which we follow for everything we do. And I won't go into all of them in this presentation, but I will mention two of the golden rules which we follow as they have a very large impact on the way we do things and the way how things have been designed. So the two golden rules are tenant A cannot negatively impact tenant B and no tenant can negatively affect the platform. Another of the key principles which we follow is that we treat any tenant and environment as production. So that means, for example, we treat the development cluster which teams use as our first production environment. And although they're not any Sky customers who are using that environment, because there are 90 plus uh, development teams, depending on that environment, any disruption can have a huge impact to their ability to deliver and to the business as well. And although we are a platforming team, we measure our success by the success of the tenants who are the teams using the platform. So our view is that one might have the best most perfect platform in the world, but if people are struggling to adopt it, then it really isn't a successful platform. And that really comes through in how we actually implement a lot of the capabilities which we have. And on this slide, we have some interesting stats which give a brief view of the scale which we're working at. So the multi-tenanted platform currently supports uh, just over 13 departments with over 90 teams, which is about 1000 engineers using the platform. These teams are using a wide variety of different technologies. So our goal is to provide a consistent interface for everyone. And we largely achieve this through Kubernetes, but we also build custom tooling and libraries for teams to leverage as well. And on this slide, we have a bit of a snapshot of some of the interesting technical stats. We have over 300 unique applications deployed to the platform with more than 60,000 replicas running across all environments. And to support the required scale, we have performance tested our central services, such as Ingress to 1 million TPS. 
And that's enough from me with an introduction to the platform. I'll hand over to Anthony to talk about why we show Cilium and eBPF. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm going to talk about why we've been choosing um, Cilium at Sky and how we've been like mitigating the risk uh, with the help of CCG Core Engineering Consulting Group. So first of all, at Sky, how we've seen like there is a lot of application running on top of the platform and, and on top of Kubernetes with multi-tenanted uh, architecture. Um, so and by default on Kubernetes, you've got like a flat network where every single pod can talk between each other. So we want to restrict with the help of Kubernetes network policies and CDM network policies. Uh, restrict network communication within the cluster, so from pod to pod. We want to also allow and block uh, access to external endpoints, for example, a databases to our tenants. So a specific tenant are going to be able to talk to a specific databases uh, and so on. We also want to block malicious IP defined by the, by the security team. And that's going to be defined at the cluster level. And we want to make sure like the tenant cannot override it. And we want to move towards the least privileged access models where every single tenant are going to de define the full network flow. Um, due to the high scale and requirement from Sky, we've got like some scalability concern using uh, IP tables. So we've been deciding to le leverage and, and, and uh, embrace Cilium and eBPF. So Cilium is going to essentially uh, inject some eBPF program inside the kernel to interact with, uh, with the network stack. Um, and is gonna is Kubernetes aware, so has the full uh, topology and 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 IPs, which is gonna be able to inject inside the BPF map and share the data between the BPF program and and the Kubernetes context. That's gonna allow us to have a more efficient load balancing and network policies uh, propagation. And we're heavily relying on the deny functionality of Cilium to block uh, at the cluster level every single IPs. Uh, which seems to be malicious and, and also using host network policies. And with a low overhead of eBPF, we have the, the nice observability feature like uh, using Hubble and Cilium Monitor. So in order to embrace this kind of new, to new technologies, we, we want to make sure um, so is, uh, we want to mitigate the risk before going to production. So we're gonna show how we've been like mit mitigating the risk by automating the, the test. Uh, so you've got a Git repository, you're going to push uh, uh, and, and then you're going to have a build which is going to be uh, deployed. So you, you, you commit and the build is going to be started on our CI agent. And we're going to run all the localized tests. So for example, linting, DGOS, vulnerability scanning, and when everything has been uh, uh, passed, we can obviously the, the image, the Docker image has been built and, and published to the test repository. So when everything has been passed, as I said, the test uh, image is going to be available and then it's going to be pulled and reused by the, uh, all, the, all our tests, like non-functional non testing and functional testing. And if those one pass, it's going to be promoted up to the next repository, which is Excited Test. So as part of those tests, so we've got two main tests, the so functional testing, which we are heavily relying on the Cilium connectivity test suite, which is provided by Cilium. And it's essentially a bunch of pods which are deployed in the cluster and doing some DNS, HTTP uh, check, connectivity check, and also uh, making sure the Cilium network policies and Kubernetes network policies are, uh, the behavior is expected on, and working on a, on a running cluster. And we've been adding some additional functional testing, uh, including like, for example, making sure namespace network policies cannot override the cluster-wide deny policies. Uh, we want to make sure like the Cilium identities are limited to some specific uh, la label, so to limit the number of identities inside the cluster. So for us, we only limit on the namespace labels. That means every single namespace are gonna have a one-to-one -one mapping with, with the Cilium identities. Um, and we want to make sure, for example, when we apply a network policies, the existing TCP connection are gonna be blocked. So that's one of the main tests, making sure we've got functional requirement and, and, and testing. And then we've got the non-functional testing, which is uh, we are trying to have like a 30 minute of, uh, fast feedback uh, loop. And what we want to exercise is a full network and making sure everything can work because Cilium is, uh, 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 using or interacting with with a, with the network stack, uh, so essentially the exercising the full network pass is having a some load injector sending some load through a backend, and then we've got like multiple 
uh, communication happening, so from pod to pod, from using the service IP, but also cross-cluster communication uh, using the internal and external ingresses. And obviously, we are relying on, on a Kubernetes hostname to, to target this, this service. So we are exercising the DNS and UDP flow uh, by resolving the Kubernetes hostname uh, through service IP and, and core DNS. And talking to the backend, we're using G HTTP and gRPC and the TCP, exercising the TCP stack, uh, which is what the tenant are using on our platform. During this time, when the full load run, we are including some resilience and chaos testing, um, which means essentially like deleting a Cilium agent pod, a Cilium operator, one of the ETC, Cilium ETCD member, and, and also the, uh, the backend. And it's really important to, to delete the, the backend, which is receiving the load, uh, to exercise uh, a rolling deployment and or deleting a pod, uh, the business as usual um, on the platform. And that's going to force the, the load injector to re-establish connection and recycle connection. So we are trying to target like the worst case scenario. And we have like, um, showing some number like the number of identities we want to have uh, at the maximum on, on, on a cluster and then and then trying to reproduce it on our test environment. Uh, we have also some dedicated tests which is uh, to simulate a migration from uh, Cilium 1.7. So for example we deploy 1.7 on, on an existing cluster, we run the load and while the, the load is running and the chaos testing happening, we, we deploy the new version which is was Cilium 1.9 to make sure there is no uh, disruption. Uh, obviously, it's very hard to have every single use case and test. So that's why we automate all the tests, making sure we, we can we can scale. And every time we've got an issue reported, then we, we, we make sure we had regression testing uh, to make sure the, the issue is not going to happen again. So as part of the non-functional testing, we've got four different tests. The first one is uh, we are simulating the identity chain, so it's essentially creating and deleting some pod, which can uh, uh, have uh, produce some some identity chain, and the, the identity are injected inside the BPF policy map. So we simulate uh, or create five thousand identities, and we've noticed a small age case. So during all those four tests, obviously you've got the chaos testing happening, and you've got some uh, CDM agent, CDM operator, and and also uh, ETCD, CDM ETCD member and the backend um, we started. Uh, and we've noticed a very small edge case uh, scenario with CDM agent restart, where when you restart it, you've got a small increase in terms of drop as part of the matrix, but it's not affecting the client due to the TCP retry. And we've been like uh, working closely with Cilium and Isovalent team to, to merge it upstream, to merge a fix upstream. Uh, and then you've got the second test, which is uh, exactly the same, but uh, without the uh, agent restart and we tolerate zero drop. And the first test is, uh, we, the second test might go away and so we're just gonna have the first one, but uh, tolerating zero drop when when uh, when we're gonna release a uh, new, new version. The third test uh, is uh, simulating like the CDM network uh, policies recreation, which is, um, so it's going to exercise like flushing the BBF map and all the information inside when you delete the CM network policies, but, and when you create it, it's just going to uh, add all the data inside the BBF policy map. Um, and we use the cluster entities, which is uh, gathering all the identities and allowing all the identities inside the cluster uh, to, to talk uh, to this, this target. And we do that with the identity chance, and the fourth one is without identity chance to isolate which which uh, scenario or, uh, is is um, impacting. To give you a bit more insight, so for example, we are heavily relying on metrics as when when the load is running, and we we have been creating some alert, and we gate the, the test, and and we fail the test if there is an, uh, any alert uh, generated. So as you can see on, on the left, you've got the pod creation. So we are trying to create pod to generate identities uh, related to, and at peak, you've got like 10, 10, 10 uh, pod created per second, which, and you can see the pod count, which is like roughly around like 1500 and which is matching the identity Delta, even Delta, which is a number of identities. And you, we, we delete some of them. So you've got the identity churn, so you can see it, it can go up and down. You've got the BPF map, uh, operation, which is 
uh, showing all, all the all the operations are happening on the BPF, the cilium drop, and and and, and also you can see the four tests with, with the load injector with two two thousand kTPS, and we monitor the load injection uh, latency, making sure it's not there is no increase, and the CPU and memory uh, give us the ability to define properly on at the worst case scenario on the demand set. So when when both tests has been has, has passed. Um, we're going to promote this, this artifact, so the Docker, Docker image, to, to the extended test repository. Uh, at, every at, at, at every single day, uh, at 6 p.m., we are running what we call extended NFT, or non-functional testing, which is essentially the non-functional test, which has been uh, running for 30, for, for 30 minutes. But for this time, it's going to be a longer period of time, and for maximum 16 hours, but in our use case for CLM engine, uh, it, it's going to run for eight hours, which gives us a good amount of time to, to show any memory leak or any, any issue happening uh, at scale. When everything has been passed, it's going to be promoted to uh, different organizations. So it's going to be one for NBCU, one for uh, Sky, and they're going to be deployed on different clusters. That's why we've got different organizations. Um, and we deploy to what we call pre-dev, which is one of the specific environment. So at Sky, we've got um, multiple environment. You've got uh, pre-dev, dev, and stage and prod. Uh, so they are all tenant facing, which means like the dev team are deploying application on top of it, except pre-dev, where pre-dev is only the infrastructure people who are deploying some application and making sure, exercising the network, making sure there is no issue. So we've been building for all those kind of three, four environment, building what we call continuous load, which is essentially a, some load injection uh, running 24 seven on the cluster and targeting a backend. And obviously you've got the chaos testing happening at the same time on those backend. Uh, and it's going to exercise the full network flow, internal, external ingresses, and Kubernetes services. Uh, obviously, we're going to gather all the metrics and, and define some alerts. So, for example, latency increase, HTTP error, packet drop, and that's how we can get promotion from one environment to the other one uh, through the alert. Um, at 8.30, we've got like the promotion mechanism, uh, which is going to be from promoted to one pre-dev to dev and so on, uh, if there is no alert uh, defined. And at 10 AM, for example, you've got, we've got, because we've got multiple regions, we can stagger the, uh, the deployment across multiple clusters. So at 10 AM, you've got the first region and then the second one at 12 and for the same environment. And then we, if anything happening on, on, on the first one, then we, we can stop obviously the deployment on the second one. Thank you. It was a brief overview on how we've been like leverage, leveraging Cilium and eBPF at Sky at scale, and um, and thanks for the CECG and Core Engineering Consulting Consulting Group uh, for for the help. Um, we are hiring at Sky and also CECG. So if you have any question, please let us know.